Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. And tonight I'm looking at putting together, uh, finally installing from the live USB I created in the last video onto my hard drive. Now this is MX19.2, the AHS Oz edition. And I'm going to, uh, I got to do a little partitioning. I'm going to decide to take the opportunity to repartition one of my drives. So I'm going to go ahead and start up the installer. And it does say, now one of the cool things, new things in, in here is that we got the live log tab. And you can kind of sort of watch this. Uh, you can see what's going on behind the scenes as the installer does this trick. I don't need to change the keyboard settings. I'm going over here. Now if I wanted to auto install on no disk, I could do that. But I don't want to do that because I've got a lot of partitions that are, that uh, I don't want overwritten uh, on both drives. So I'm going to click the run partition tool. And that's going to fire open gparted, which is a very nice partition tool, in case you don't know. And you'll see this is my, uh, let's see, is this the right drive? Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's the right drive. And you can see right now I have an eight, an old 18.3 partition. I have a MX19 partition. I've got my Steam games. This is my S this is my SSD drive, and I like my Steam games to load fast, so I put them on there. And then I got swap on the drive. Now, a lot of people will tell you you don't want swap on your um, SSD. I say it's my SSD, and I'll do what I want. Um, the SSD, you'll see over here in the corner that the that my drives aren't don't have all the labels. I've actually re re are not sequential quite. I got one, two, three, four, and seven. That's because I've re-sequenced this drive a couple of times already, and I'm going to do it again tonight because I'm going to get rid of one of these test partitions. I've actually found that um, 35 gigs is plenty uh, for a partition, uh, but I'm I think I just want to have one great one, one much larger partition uh, for doing the things that I'm doing. So I'm going to repartition my drive that way. I do have two drives in this system, but I'm not going to be using the B drive because the B drive is my test disk. It also has my my old Windows install on it. I've got some uh, some smaller partitions to use for for various uh, testing purposes for my for the dev work, and I also got this big honking. 500 gig partition here. That's the uh, that's pretty much all the data for MX packages that we have, um, and I also keep a data partition around. That's for things like documents and spreadsheets and music and and things like that. Um, this 130 gig one here is actually the Windows the Windows partition. Um, uh, uh, we had a user out there who commented on the channel who wanted to see some partitioning work done, so I'm going to partition it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the two partitions that I don't want. So I'm going to select them and delete them. And then I'm going to make a new partition. And I want all the space used in that partition. EXT4 is what I want, and that's going to be MX19. The installer will actually set that label again later, but we can I can do it now. And I'm going to say OK. And there it goes. Yes, I will lose data. I will blow away everything that was on those two partitions. Um, uh, the MX-18 partition has been there for a very long time. The MX-19 partition has been there since the original 19 release. So uh, I'm cleaning out a lot of crud doing this because, quite frankly, when you're doing dev work, you every now and then I just got to clean the clean the shelves. I am not the uh, neatest when it comes to keeping my system partitions clean. So hit apply. This is actually should be relatively quickly quickly done. Yep. All right, so there's our new partition. You also notice that I have an EFI system partition. Uh, if you were sharp-eyed, you'd see that it was. I actually have one on both the uh, SSD and on the very on the larger one terabyte spinning media drive. That's because um, I just find it convenient to have two. Uh, uh, I had a little bit of problem with Windows on this machine setting it up, changing it so that it would boot from this other boot per EFI partition. So I just kept two. So Linux is on my fast drive and Windows is on the slow one and it just makes me happy that way. 
As you can see I have one, two, four, and seven now. The numbers don't matter. The kernel takes care of that. Uh, we just use U UUIDs, universal identifiers, anyway when we set up drives in the installer. So we should be fine here. I'm going to close this. I'm done with Gparted. I've partitioned it. And now I'm going to custom install on existing partitions. I'm going to select the root partition I want. Now if you remember, that was this guy right here. SDA2, 70 gigabytes. Yep. And you can put a label in. Yeah, the installer does do it. Do a little, get a little bit of resize in there, so you can see you can put a new label in there. I'm just going to make mine the mix 19, so that I can find it later. I keep my home partition on the root drive, so I'm not going to change that. Swap is going to be uh, existing. I will pick the existing one. That will not be reformatted. It'll just uh, that way the uh, UUID doesn't change. It won't affect anybody else. And then I'm not going to use a separate boot partition. This is handy if you want to encrypt the drives. I don't keep this drive encrypted because, quite frankly, uh, I need my family to be able to use it, and I can never be sure that they'll remember the passwords. So we go on. It's going to give you a summary of what's about to happen. Looks good to me. SDA2 for the root partition. Configure SDA7 as swap space. And go to town. Now, while the installation is happening, I can do uh, I can I can keep going with some different uh, uh, op, uh, different uh, uh, parts of the install the help over here will to show will tell you that and you also see the big blue next buttons good to go I'm gonna go ahead and, and tell it where I want grub installed that's the bootloader and I want it installed on the ESP which it defaults to because I'm on an EFI system UEFI system and I'm going to use it on that first uh, system partition that we had. And you can see I've got two, one on each drive, but I already know it's that one right there. The one on the same drive, the SSD. Uh, and I'm still copying. I'll give it a name. I like to name mine a uh, little bit, a little bite, actually. This is the bigger of the two. This doesn't matter. This is a holdover from, from domains when, when uh, just... This almost doesn't matter, and if you if you need a domain, you can set it up here, and you'll do some additional configuration later. But if you don't need a domain, just leave it. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm not going to turn on the Samba server on this system because I don't share drives on my laptop. Uh, we have a server in the house, and that's what I use there. But the work group at home is home, not work group. Now I can set up my English. I, I am English, but we got all the various locales to set up. Uh, you can set your time zone, you can set your clock format, and whether you use local time or not. If you're dual booting with Windows, you might want to use local time. I don't know. It's up. It's your system. Uh, Linux, by default, uses what's called universal time, UTC time. Um, that's, that's based on Greenwich, England being zero. But most Microsoft systems use uh, local time, which is the time in whatever time zone you're in. Um, you can set Windows to use UTC. You can set uh, Linux to use local time. I don't care what you do. Uh, I actually have my system set to use UTC, and I ignore Windows. Uh, if Windows boots up with the wrong time, it just doesn't bother me, and it's fine. Um, and then you can also, if you have a lot of fun, you can you can turn off certain settings. There's not that many in here, so if you don't know what you're doing, leave them on. Um, if you have some particular reason why you want to disable a service, uh, you know, you're free to do so. Uh, and that's fine. So there we go. We see we're up to 32% here on the copy. We're still setting up stuff. I can go ahead and give them, give it my default log username. And uh, give it a password. And another password. Another password. And I'm not going to use auto login. I'm not going to save desktop changes on this because I don't have to. Uh, I haven't made any changes. Uh, but if you had made some change on the live USB to the desktop, like the wallpaper, or through some icons on there, or something like that, or some setting, you can check that and it'll copy those over uh, to the system as well. So hit next. Okay, and now it's just going to go ahead and finish the copy. And when it's done with the copy, it's going to set up all those other things. And then I'll be able to reboot into my freshly installed system. The only change I made on the US, on this USB is I installed OSB Studio, OSB, OBS Studio so that I can make the video recording. 
I am recording on the live USB. I am running this PC on the live USB. And it's, uh, uh, of course, you can do that with MX and Annex live USB system. Installing Grub always seems to take longer than it needs to, but it actually um, does slightly more this phase. It installs Grub and it and it also uh, updates the initial RAM FS system uh, so that you can um, so that the system has knows what drivers to load to boot. Strictly speaking, not part of Grub, but that's in this phase, so it takes a little while to do. Little bit of cleanup. We got the checkbox now that says, "Hey, automatically reboot the system when the installer's closed." And we go, and it's got some helpful help information and 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 some links in the in the text messages. And that's it. Uh, once I click finish, I'll be rebooted back into my uh, uh, into my freshly installed uh, MX Linux system. So that's setting up your partitions and. Uh, re -inst and installing MX. For tips, tricks, how to's, head over to mxlinux.org or annexlinux.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.